We're really delighted to be joined today by the European Ombudsman, Ms. Emily O'Reilly. Ms. O'Reilly has been serving as European Ombudsman since July 2013. Prior to this, she was Ireland's first female Ombudsman and Information Commissioner. She's also a decorated uh, journalist, author and political editor. It's a real pleasure for you to be with us today. Thank you very much Thank for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> I might just start with a very basic question. What is the role of the European Ombudsman? Okay, good question. Um, well, the European Ombudsman is the Ombudsman uh, who takes complaints against the European administration. So that can be any of the institutions, bodies or agencies. So it could be against the Commission, it could be against the European Central Bank, it could be against the European Medicines Agency, any of those bodies. Um, so if you, you have to have, the complaint has to be directed against an institution. So if you want to complain about the Health Service in Ireland, you go to the Irish Ombudsman, you don't go to the European Ombudsman. Um, so most people's complaints are dealt with at national level. Most people's complaints in their daily lives are about health, social protection, education, housing, all of that. They're dealt with at member state level. So at the European level, the, the issues can be a little bit different. So we get a lot of freedom of information requests, access to documents would be a big piece. Lots of people are in receipt of European money, contracts, grants, all of that. Sometimes there might be a problem, they come to us to deal with that. Um, we also deal with um, uh, allegations that there has been a breach of um, human rights, um, allegations that there's been a breach of the Charter of Fundamental Rights. So for example, you might have an NGO working in Greece who thinks that the, some European agency hasn't done its work properly or there's a problem there, they come to us. Also we have young people who are looking for jobs in Europe um, and they apply through, the, through EPSA, the European Personnel Selection Office. Sometimes if they're not successful, they feel that there might have been something wrong with the process, they come to us. So it's a vast range of issues. Like the Irish Ombudsman, which I was, as you say, a few years ago, I, I make recommendations. They're not binding decisions that a court would make, uh, but the vast majority of them are thankfully accepted by the, uh, by the institutions. And uh, within this broad spectrum of issues that you've mentioned, what um, will, you, will your objectives be over the next five years? You've recently been re-elected for your second full term. What are you going to be focusing on? Well, I, I've been looking very carefully at what the, the Commission is planning, uh, its, its programme, its, its strategy for the next few years, obviously also the Parliament. And a number of issues stand out, obviously uh, climate change is one, uh, migration continues to be, to be an issue, obviously uh, defence is becoming a bigger issue within the EU. So wherever I can um, usefully deal with administrative issues, problems that arise in, in, in relation to those areas, I can do that. I mean, for example, in, in climate change, we, we might be dealing with access to documents requests in relation to pesticides or the protection of bees or, you know, where money is going in relation to a particular project uh, involving the environment. So um, where we can usefully involve ourselves, we will. So I want to make the office much more useful to citizens and help to, I know it sounds pious, but it is true, to make that bridge between the European institutions, which can seem very far away, and, and the citizen. And just on that theme, uh, placing citizens at the centre of democracy figures very strongly in the Commission's work programme. How important do you think public trust is for the future of your... Well, it, it's huge. Sometimes when you, when you even use words like, like, like trust and, or accountability or anything like that, they, they seem abstract, but they actually, are, they actually are very meaningful because the union has to exist on trust. I mean, they have to trust. It, it, trust is the glue that keeps the union together. I mean, the people and the citizens have to believe that they are better off inside the union than outside it. They also have to believe that the institutions are working not for themselves, but, but for the people. And that's why, obviously, that the Commission President, the Commission has come out with all of this, and citizen-focused and, and all of that, and I will be holding them to account in relation to that, and making sure that their, their words are matched by their deeds. And just on those themes of trust, accountability, you've spoken about the need to hold national politicians to account for decisions they make at EU level. Yes, yes, this is the blame Brussels culture. I mean, and we saw that in, in full flower during the Brexit referendum. Uh, when a, a sort of a caricature of, of, of Brussels, the face of the bureaucrat, had been developed. And it was a very negative um, and damaging stereotype, and we saw the, we saw the result of that. But in fact, the people who make laws are not the Commission, and the faces, so called faces bureaucrats, the people who make the laws are the co legislature which is the Parliament, elected by all of us in our member states, uh, and the Council, who are our, our ministers for agriculture, finance, and all of them, who all go over to Brussels several times a year to, uh, to formulate laws which have an impact on us. 
But most people don't, don't see that because the work of the council, which is all our, our ministers, is quite opaque. Um, sort of hands across your homework sort of stuff. And that's done for some genuine reasons because it's very hard to get 27 member states to agree on things. But at the same time, it would be impossible to believe that in Ireland we wouldn't know a position our government was taking on a particular issue. So it should be exactly the same uh, in Europe. The people have a right to know what they have a right, not because I say they have a right, they have a right under the treaties. Uh, to engage in the democratic life of the Union and they can't do that unless they, they know what's going on and particularly what positions their own member states are taking so that they can have a say in that and try and influence the play if they choose to. And very finally, the European Parliament election saw a, a significant rise in voter turnout in many member states. Do you think this is evidence of a renewed appetite for citizen engagement with the European project? Uh, I do. Uh, I think there's, there's certainly um, uh, evidence of renewed interest because, oddly enough, e even, even though uh, you know, Europe has been beset by crisis over, over the last while, the you know, migration and, and the deaths of so many thousands of people on, on, on our shores, whether it be the, the Greek, the financial crisis, Brexit and all of that, it's, it's also heightened people's interest uh, in, 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 in the EU, in, in, in Brussels and all of that. People are able to, I think people are following it with more interest now. They can also recognise personalities um, outside of their own member, member state people. Um, and I think they certainly do want to, to get more involved. They want to have a say in it, and particularly young people. Uh, because it was the young people who felt really disenfranchised in the UK uh, following the result of, 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 um, uh, of the Brexit referendum. And I think a lot of the, of the marches and the demonstrations and the movements that were started, um, a kick-started in the wake of that, were, were led by young people because they're the people, you're the people who are going to have inherited the, the EU. Well, Angus Minorelli, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.